guys, what's up? It's Wenji. Welcome to my Do It Better series because I'm celebrating my new song, Do It Better. Gonna try, but they can't compete. I put together, I be so complete. These girls make cry for me and change up their whole life for me. Yeah. And today we're talking about how to do your 30s better. As requested by you guys, I did the 20s, I did teens. I am at 37 right now. I'm gonna give you guys as much advice as I can for your 30s. Of course, like I said, I haven't cleared 30s yet, so I'm sure I'm like missing things. And I have to disclaim this video by saying that. In my 30s, I may not have the life a lot of my peer 30 year olds have. I don't have kids. I don't have a house. I'm not married. I'm not living that kind of life. So this is a perspective of a, you know, 37 year old that is trying to be a pop singer, a music artist, has built a following online and a personal brand and works as a creator full time and runs her own business. So just keep that in mind, like the lessons that I've learned are going to be kind of from that vein in my 30s. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of things we can all generally relate to. My 30s has been the most dramatic. Like I thought my teens were dramatic and I thought my 20s were dramatic, but my 30s have by far been the most dramatic. And I feel like this is the case for a lot of my friends that like are the similar age as me because the things that happen in your 30s tend to be like on a bigger scale. The things that could happen in your teen years on as big, like I've had friends go through divorces, have kids, change careers. So every kind of like change in your thirties, like a kind of big, because if they aren't big, you usually like don't have the energy to change them. Like, let's just be real. Being an adult is tiring and busy. Like you just don't have time to care about the little things. So the things that do change in your life are kind of substantial. I guess the first piece of advice to do your 30s better is don't worry if you're not where you think you'll be at in life. I think we really romanticize like our adult life when we're young and we think like, okay, we're going to get married at like, you know, 24. We're going to have kids at like 28 and we're going to buy a house at 30 and stuff like that. But like, guys, it never goes according to plan. And even those that are kind of on track, like I have friends that like have the house and kids and like everything. It happens at a later timeline than you actually think is going to happen. So like if you think you're going to get married at 23, it usually ends up being like 28. So everything just kind of gets pushed back. Don't sweat if you don't have your life in order because I don't have my life in order and I thought I would have by now. And then I feel like maybe we just never have the feeling that our life is in order and it's just that we get wiser and experience more things, but still have like the same insecure feelings of like, are we doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? And like kind of the older you get, the only difference that it changes is like you feel like I have less time, I have less time, I have less time. Chill, calm down, de-stress. We're all going through the same thing. We all feel like we haven't done enough. We all feel like there are things going wrong that we we think that we could have like settled by now because apparently when we're 30, we're smarter and wiser. When is that gonna come? It hasn't come for me. Like I still don't know what I'm doing half the time and I still don't know if what I'm doing is right half the time. It's like, is something magical gonna click because it hasn't clicked yet? And this is from someone that has built a massive following online, my brand. And if I told my 20 self, that I've achieved all these things, she would have been like, wow, you've got it made. You've got it together. You've like figured it out. But meanwhile, I'm sitting here going, I haven't really figured it out. Like at least it doesn't feel that way. And maybe like I'm a weird case where like, maybe I'll never figure it out. And that's just like a me thing. Don't worry guys, my life looks so put together from the outside, but in here, it ain't happening. So to summarize how to do this part of your 30s better is just to take it one step at a time. Like don't try and be planning all these huge things. Just think about like what you want to do next and really focus on that. And I feel like that takes away the stress of like trying to have everything in order. And I find that whenever I get to that moment where I can be like that Zen with my life, that's when I achieve a lot of things. Like when I grew my channel, prior to being able to grow my channel 
like that widely successful, I would have so many thoughts running through my head. I have to get this done. I have to get this done. I have to achieve this in the next two years. I have to get married. You know, I have to start a business that's like widely successful in the next two years. And what that created in my life is like a lot of chaos. And prior to growing my channel, I had lots of like businesses I started up. I started up a website to take like surveys. I started up a male fashion website. I started up and joined my friend working on like a secondhand fashion like site to help people like sell their secondhand clothes. I did a lot of stuff and it was absolute chaos and nothing was successful because I couldn't really sit down and just focus on the next step. I was focusing on the next 20 steps, getting overwhelmed and then like just failing dramatically because I was overwhelmed or I would just jump to the next thing that I think will solve my my problems when it really didn't. Take it one day at a time, take it one month at a time. Don't really be putting like so much pressure on yourself. So if you wanna do your 30s better, this is also super important and that is take care of your physical and mental health. In my teens and in my 20s, I could get away with basically trashing my body and it would be okay, I would survive. I would eat so much junk food, I would eat McDonald's, I eat Burger King and I wouldn't put on weight. I was very, very lucky. But in your 30s, you can't get away with that. If I eat junk, I feel it within the next six hours. If I like stay up late and do an all nighter, I am recovering for three days. Yes, that's like feeling old and people make jokes about feeling old all the time, but it's just reality. Your body is just not as good as in your 20s, like regenerating and healing and things like that. So you really, really got to make time for yourself. And I think this is one of the hardest things to do in your 30s, because usually you're like right in the middle of your career. You are so busy. You probably have kids. You probably have a home to look after all these responsibilities and just like making sure you survive. Surviving these days in this economic environment with all this inflation is tough. We are no longer living in everyone can buy a house. Like I feel like I can't buy a house and I have a very successful kind of business and make time for yourself, even if it's 20, 30 minutes. The things that you really need to take care of yourself is one, your diet. Please, please figure out a way to eat more greens, to have more protein, to cut down your carbs, to eat more whole foods and less processed foods. And you might say, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. You'll regret this in like in your 40s if you don't take care of it in your 30s and develop good habits. Try and cut down the alcohol, try and cut down the processed food, try and cut down overeating, try and do some intermittent fasting, try and like drink more water, try and have a really, really nice skincare routine. And skincare is one of those things like you should, if you're not started already in your 20s, like you should get on this in your 30s. Like You're going to see the effects of it. Like as you go to mid thirties and onwards, the effects are just going to be immediate. If I don't have a good night's sleep, you could see it on my face. Like I could not sleep for two days in my twenties and look fresh and amazing. But in your thirties, I don't sleep for one night. You can see it in my face. The thing is guys, like a good skincare routine isn't hard to implement and it isn't expensive. There's a lot of things you could do, like actually learning ingredients that are in your skincare routine, actually learning about food and diet and health and not those fat diets, but like what vitamins do you need? Are you covering it? All these things, I would set aside time and educate yourself because not only is it going to help you, if you're going to have kids, you want to teach your kids like proper habits and because I drink Coke like water and I ate frozen dinners like on the daily. Get a good skincare routine, make time for self-care such as working out, exercise, learn about diet and nutrition and your food, get enough sleep, and just prioritize self-care for yourself. Like in your 30s, the other thing you really have to consider to do it better is to basically have a stock take of your life. And in particular, take a note of who you are including in your life. Because I feel like in your 30s, it's a really good practice that every single year you kind of look at all the people that you've connected with and you've made friends with and you really clean, do like a spring clean of them. Because I feel like the people that you include in your life highly affect one, your trajectory, where you're going, your mood, your mental health. And 
you know, being with toxic people, just like we don't have time for that in our 30s. We have so many responsibilities to take care of. We have homes, we have families, we have jobs, we have careers. You know, we barely have time for ourselves. It's like, why be spending time with people that aren't benefiting your life? And the thing is, a lot of us don't really like consciously think about it. We just get into the habit of being friends with someone just because you know them and you're familiar with them doesn't mean they're good for you. And knowing like who isn't is really important in your 30s because we don't have time. And if you get rid of someone toxic, you could make time from someone better, like the limited time you have. Like literally for me to socialize, I really don't have that much time to socialize in my 30s. It's literally one day a week if I'm lucky. I'm just so busy with other things. And when you run your own business, like you know how it basically takes over your life. I feel like in your 20s, it's really good to meet a lot of people and make a lot of friends and just like really expand your connections. And in your 30s, I think, you know, we have so much connections and baggage from our 20s. It's now time to cull them. And, you know, every year spring clean. And if you need to meet new people because you are in a different stage of life, spring cleaning your old, you know, friends and stuff would mean you would make space for new friends. But the thing is, I found in my 30s that I really connect and stay in touch with a lot of people that I've known since I was in high school, in my teens. I feel like those connections are really valuable to me in my 30s, more so than my 20s. In my 20s, I was so excited to meet new people. But in my 30s, I feel like I've just taken a step back and really gone back to being friends with people that are in my roots and that I've been friends with for a long time because like subconsciously I'm probably friends with them for a long time because I enjoy their company and they benefit my life and naturally I usually distance myself from people that I don't think benefit me and because in my 20s when I was building my businesses and trying to do self-improvement I made it a conscious thought like the quote like you are the average of the seven closest people around you really stuck with me and I really lived that through my 20s. So I have been like consciously culling and and really, really like choosing who I include in my life since my 20s. It's now become a habit in my 30s. And I will know straight away if this kind of person just doesn't belong in my life. And I think in your 30s, you know yourself a lot better now to know that like who belongs and who isn't. Because in my 20s, I was like 10 different people and I could have been a different person like in three weeks time. So it was really hard to really like even decide who I wanted to include in my life because I didn't even know who I was. Just to give you an example on how I create people in my life, my late 20s, my channel blew up and I met a ton of different people. And in the beginning, I was like wanting to be friends with everyone because I was just excited to meet them. A lot of them were like also famous as well or powerful or successful in some way so like I was like literally starstruck by everyone and I soon realized like in my 30s that the kind of person I am is I'm very introverted I love my personal space I love staying at home I have very very little social energy to go out and do things because I really prioritize work if you're not involved in my work I just really have a hard time making time for you because you know, I'm just so busy trying to achieve my goals. I'm a Capricorn for reference, so that probably all makes sense after you know that. But that's just who I am. And, I, you know, in the beginning, I was kind of ashamed of it because it doesn't sound very nice to be like, hey, I literally want to hang with people that benefit my career and, you know, what I'm trying to do. That's just who I was. And also, I'm not very good at keeping in contact with people. Like I can't do the whole like small talk, turn up to events and parties to like keep the connection alive. Like I would prefer to keep a friendship connection alive via text. You know, I'm more than happy to text you back and, and like get updates that way. But to go through all the effort of going to a party, finding an outfit, getting the Uber, like I just, I just can't do all that. So I found myself really like, making friends with people with a similar lifestyle as me and also with the similar amount of friendship maintenance. Someone that has like a friendship maintenance where they need to see the other person all the time and we need to always be hanging out. It was so hard to stay friends with people like that no matter how much like I enjoyed them and vice versa. I'm not I'm not unreasonable. So for me, like I said, I really enjoy people that help my business. I will do the same for my friends. If my friends come to me and need advice or something 
or need my help in something for their career or their business or whatever they want to do. I don't care if we haven't hung out in eight months. I will help you because for me, friendship isn't about like seeing each other every week. It's about like, hey, if you've helped me and like, you know, to do what I want to do, I will help you. You know, it's like a, a give and take. So it's like a very particular style of friendship that I feel like a lot of people may not be okay with. And then I had to be okay with that. And I had to just not feel bad when people just didn't want to be my friend because like they probably got mad at me for not turning up to things or not going to see them. But that's just not who I am. The people I see the most are usually the people I work with or the people I live with. And that's just how it is. So with my connections, it's like being upfront about that and also just being really, really realistic about the type of friends I can make as well. And I think this is one of the most important things for a girly in her 30s. Get your finances in order. I know I went on about this in my like 20s video and I am so passionate about this, guys. Finances are so important in your 30s. By now, you should already be saving money. You should already have an investment account and I'm saying should and I literally did start this video saying like it's okay to not have your life together even if you're married I would sort my own stuff out because I've seen so many divorces happen and as a woman you don't want to be stuck in a relationship because you're relying on a man financially somehow in a marriage you should be able to have your own money and have your own like bank account in case things get bad like abusive you know like really really bad you don't feel like you're stuck and that's the worst thing like with women that feel like they're stuck it's usually because you don't have your own finances or you may be too scared to be out on your own. At least with finances, you can control that right now. So it's like, I'm gonna do a separate finance video, of course, to really cover everything that I've learned about finances. But my biggest advice is to have your own pot. Like, yes, have a joint account if that's your thing. I think that's also very healthy for a couple. But also have your own account where you have enough emergency funds saved up that if you need to make a big change in your life, you can and also ensure that you have not only the financial support to be able to be independent, even in a relationship like a marriage and kids also have people around you that are emotionally supporting you outside your family network that you can go to in case of emergencies. And if you're a woman, don't make this supportive contact a man because I feel like that is not respectful for your current relationship. Make it like other women, make it your family, you know? Just, just pick wisely who you use as your support system. Make sure they have the same kind of mindset as you. Make sure they actually do love you. Just because they're family doesn't mean they will treat you well and love you. And kind of a tip for this financially as well is start looking into investing in also like things that will last for a long time. In my 20s, I bought a lot of cheap things because that's all I could afford. By the time you're 30s, you should be more financially settled and you should be able to save up and invest in pieces that will last you a long time. Also by my 30s, I had a pretty good idea of what my body shape was and it wasn't really gonna change. I mean, just like the only change I would have is like putting on weight. But I generally had a really good idea on what I liked and didn't like in terms of like fashion, makeup and all this kind of stuff and now a good financial decision is actually not to buy like cheap things especially if you don't love them i am all for cheap things if you love using them again and again but like a dress that you buy for 20 dollars but you only wear once is way more expensive than a dress that you buy for like 150 and that you wear like a hundred times because you absolutely love the fit the fabric the other thing is invest in altering your clothes i know for clothes that i don't alter and don't fit well in my body i tend to just wear one or twice and then it ends up in donations and i feel so bad when i have a pile of clothes but once I've altered the clothing to fit my body the chances of it ending up in donations is so much less even if it's something from Zara like I have dresses and skirts from Zara that I've actually taken the time to alter and they stay in my closet and I've worn them like hundreds of times but I would have like more expensive clothes than Zara that were ill-fitting that would end up on that pile for me to like throw out Take that time and go alter your clothing to fit your body and go find things that really fit you that are long lasting and that you only pay once and use hundreds of times. And this is coming from a girly that loves buying and spending money and going shopping. 
I look back at, you know, the amount of skincare I would accumulate. Like I would literally have 50 bottles of things I've used three times because I'd get excited about the next product. And oh my gosh, I wish I took all that money and like literally put it in like an investment account and have that money grow because I literally didn't love those products. I didn't spend the time researching and really making sure that I love those things. So I find like a good balance between like being completely boring and just like having one thing for like the rest of your life and also being able to try new things is now I like make moments for me to try new products. Like for my skincare, my new rule is I have to finish my previous skincare in that category before buying a new one or at most because you know I am a recovering shopaholic at most have like two of those items and now I'm forcing myself to use them up before I buy the next one and that has changed my life completely because now the next time I buy something I'm like oh no Will I actually use all of this? Because I know I can't buy something new unless I finish this. It also gives you time to really evaluate that product. Like putting the skincare on five times really doesn't tell you whether it's gonna change your skin. Same with things that I eat, same with things that, you know, makeup and even things that I wear now, I consciously go and be like, okay, am I gonna wear this like a hundred times? And if not, is it a trend item I really love? And I will still buy trend items that I really love, but I wouldn't spend a ton of money on them. Like I would just buy like the cheaper version and just being really clear on like, hey, what's your wardrobe that will last? And what are fun things that can keep you excited and enjoy the process? Because I feel like going too much the other way is kind of like really hard as well, especially if you're someone that loves new things and loves trying trends. But like limit yourself, like three trend items a season, everything else that you buy like has to last and if you want to buy something new maybe like sell or donate your old one so you're like not just accumulating a ton of stuff so that is like technically financial advice because you'd be surprised how much money you could save and invest by just like implementing better shopping habits, better buying habits, just generally like better consumerism habits because I was so stuck in that consumerism mindset. I wanted that walk-in wardrobe. I still want the walk-in wardrobe. Now, how it's different for me is like, I now want the walk-in wardrobe, but I want it to be full of stuff like I've like consciously chosen, I've worn a hundred times and I really love, and it's like a process of building something, like building a home, adding each renovation. It's like building my wardrobe and like, consciously adding pieces that I love instead of going and just buying a ton of crap that's going to end up in landfill in one or two years. That's bad for our wallet, bad for our environment and like bad for our mental health because clutter does not help your life. It really defocuses you. If you're in your 30s, let me know what your lessons are. Let me know if you find this useful and let me know what other advice you want from me. Don't forget to stream my song, Do It Better. I would love for you guys to support that sound. Buy the track, stream it a hundred times, add it to your playlist. I hope you enjoy it and love the music. It's so uplifting and such a summer bop. See you on this channel super soon. Bye, love you.